Hey there, so today we have another review. This is a beer from Jolly Pumpkin. Thank you so much uh, for sending this one to me. This one is actually, um, I think I've actually had this one before. Anyway, <laughs> this is La Roja. Uh, this is a sour uh, amber ale, 7.2%, one of their classic beers, one of their more, I think one of their more for like classic beers. Um, this is an Asian large oak cast, uh, bottle fermented, uh, Franco-Belgian style ale. So, um, in style of like Flanders Red, uh, from Rosanne, blah. It's Ron Jeffries. Yep. Beautiful cap on that too. And then with these Belgian synthesis bottles. I'm sorry, I'm trying to preserve the cap a little bit. Yeah, you're okay, John. Look at that red cat on there. As that turns out. Oh, pretty nice looking beer. Um, nice kind of ruby color. Very smelly. <laughs> um, we'll talk about that in a minute, but. Um, I had it on side, so it's like not completely um, clear. I, I, I like sediment and yeast is just gonna be like if I lay it on the side and then like preserve it this way, it's gonna be all mixed in there. So uh, obviously not great clarity on this. A little bit murky, man. Not completely disgustingly uh, murky. Um, you get a really vibrant, just kind of like um, um, ruby color to it. But the color is a medium amber, a solid medium amber color. A uh, nice kind of like really rich red hues, but then a little bit of haze. Um, on a thicker part of the glass, wonderful kind of oh, waste a little beer there, but um, wonderful um, kind of like a lightly reddish kind of tan uh, head on there, and you smell it a mile away. I mean, it's that classic kind of like Flanders uh, characteristic. There's certainly a lot of um, red fruit going in here. You get a little bit of like I still want to ask today, a little bit of that banana character, but it's got a rustic kind of like um, dried, like um, dried pumpernickel kind of rye bread kind of. Uh, malt flavor to it, but then on the nose, um, it's the most prominent thing is that kind of like um, that sourness, right? Is that the um, apple cider vinegar, a lot of acetic acid, or, or I mean, it's not supposed to be really, BGCP wise, it's not supposed to be really dominated by acetic acid, but it's just like it's something that almost all beer styles avoid. So when you get it on the nose, it's so prominent, like so. It's um, and also. So along with that malt, it, it, it's got a little bit of like a light kind of nail polish uh, mover going on as well, along with acetic, um, some uh, fruity characteristics like tart reddish fruits. So like unripened cherry, um, uh, tart green Granny Smith apple. Oh. What else in there? A good amount of complexity, yeah. Um, what else? It's like a... Certainly a little bit of that salty, kind of like chemically kind of thing going on. That smells quite nice, Cheers. Have a nice temp. Mm. So this is way more drinkable on the palate, right? On the um, aroma, it smells like, you know, it could be a little bit heavy on some of those. Um, like, um, it seems like it could be a little too strong on the kind of like vinegary and nail polish kind of thing. But on the palace, it's actually quite gentle. Um, it rides actually, I'd say mostly with lactic. It actually is quite spritzy and uh, lemony up front. Um, it actually rides, so as VJCP recommends, it, it doesn't um, overly dominate or isn't overly dominated by that kind of um, apple cider beer, apple cider vinegar kind of character. Instead, it is get like zippy, lemony, and again, like goes at Berliner kind of acidity. But then on the back end, you get a little bit of that kind of um, uh, apple cider balsamic thing. thing. Here, it's more apple cider vinegar than I call balsamic. Red wine vinegar, for sure. Yeah, a little, a little bit of that. Um, it actually plays really nice. That that kind of um, apple cider vinegar plays into the, the apple-y characteristics that you can get in the beer as well, right? So not only along with Graham and Smith, they get a little bit like red apple, um, maybe a little bit of pear in there, tart apple, red apple, green apple. The acidity is actually quite nice. Um, I go medium, maybe leaning on medium plus at most, but really nice, solid, medium, medium plus kind of um, acidity. Not definitely not full on, definitely not overly dominant. The malt definitely doesn't overtake as well, which is quite nice. A little bit of that kind of light biscuity, a little bit of that toasted bread character, but um, not overly dominating. Mm. So yeah, despite um, it's it's aromatic and its color, it really isn't as malty as the color perceives. It is not as um, uh, acidic and 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 and, um, and 
um, intense on the yeast characteristics. Those um, phenols and esters is not as intense as the nose sort of gives you. Um, so really on the palate, it's really just the, again, the theme with all these beers is, is just quote unquote balance. And, and I hate using that word because it never really makes sense or means anything. Here it's really all those things that you sort of can see and smell, they can be seem a little bit disjointed, right? This, this, this color of this beer, you think it'd be a little bit more malty. On the nose, you sort of smell, you think it'd be a little bit more vinegary. But on the palate, really, it's just a really pretty, uh, super drinkable beer for its ABV, right? Elevated uh, alcohol and really super drinkable. I think that's what the style calls for. Oh, man. And, and, and um, what I find uh, sometimes with the, I, think, I feel the um, um, uh, Belgian examples, I, I find they just aren't as pretty. Like they're a little bit more, maybe more red fruit for it, maybe a little bit more malty here. It, it's a really uh, delectable, like, you know, like crushable kind of beer. Drinkability in mouth, yeah. Hmm. It's one of those beers that like, Again, I love uh, love beers that are a sort of like drink it and like don't think about it because it really just is like um, sour apple juice. It really, is like sour apple cider, um, like non-alcoholic uh, apple cider, like something you really like enjoy for like fall, winter kind of like seasonal kind of thing. Just a little bit more acidic, right? A little bit more puckering, a little bit more lemony. But then if you think about it more, there's a little bit more complexity to it. Then you get a little bit more of that kind of like Flanders edge to it. The more complex acidity, the more complex and ester and phenol is a little bit of that malt in there, but uh, it really is a very drinkable beer. It's a surprisingly, you know, um, uh, drinkable and complex, so quote unquote balance as well. So all those fun things. Um, that's sort of just a fun theme of these uh, uh, Jolly Pumpkin beers. It's just uh, so well built, you know, like you, you walk in there expecting um, bigger flavors, bolder flavors, something's going to pop out and everything's really, just really nice and, and, and eased on. Everything's smoothed over. Everything's really nice and sanded with like you know 220 grit right just smooth right throughout so it's really fun actually oh that's delicious um that's a solid i like more beers like this um it's a solid 96. you get a ni nice little light little 96 over here that's fantastic la roja from uh, jolly pumpkin that is absolutely delicious again um one of the hidden gems of this country the fact that um, I saw it up and down the state uh, when I was in Michigan. Uh, they distribute four packs. Um, hell, they have a, in the Detroit airport. They have a bar, and like, I mean, obviously they do other stuff, but a, a brewery really focused on something that's really downtrending, which is like mixed fermentation, long aged, oak aged, complex beers like this um, with nuance. Um, you know, instead of like you know punching the face, like bam, like you know smoothie sours. Like this is really nuanced, pretty. Takes age, takes nuance, takes um, blending takes, you know, and, and it's so influential that they've been going on for decades and decades and um, still doing their thing, which is just absolutely killer. This is just one of the stars in American craft beer and uh, in my mind, one of the most underrated, if I had to list the underrated breweries in this country, this has to be one of them by far. 96, unbelievable. Cheers later.